Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Creators Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So on today's episode, I'm going to be showing you a deck that is going to well surprise your opponents and just win out of nowhere it's gonna be like oh your opponents are just walking around and you're like oh yeah i'm fine yeah i'm fine i don't know why they're walking at the table maybe they are but anyways they're gonna think that oh i'm in a great position right there's no way and then all of a sudden they're gone or um yeah you can just hold this over their head and then make them do your bidding there's a lot of exciting things this deck can do let's jump into it first up let's talk about the commander atla palani and s tender a 2-3 Human Shaman for 1 in Naya Colors. Pay 2 tap, get, you get an egg. You make an egg. Zero one one egg with Defender. Whatever an egg you control dies. Real cards, they top your library into a VLA creature card. That card goes on the battlefield. The rest goes on the bottom of your library in random order. So this commander essentially is, hey, um, yeah, let's make some eggs. Let's crack some eggs. And then let's get some random things off the top. But with this kind of a deck, um, it's not going to be so random. I mean, there's a tiny bit of randomness to it where... Yeah, there's a couple of things you can get, but there's not too many things you can get. And the things that you're going to be able to get, well, work incredibly well with the strategy of this deck, which again is to take your opponents out, out of nowhere. So yes, with this, we are going to hit something absolutely massive, something absolutely huge to the point where your opponents, well, aren't going to be able to stop you once this happens. So yeah, Alapuan is a very exciting commander and it's a very budget friendly commander now. It's been reprinted now, and so now its price is just 39 cents itself. The entire DAX price, though, according to Moxville, is just $16.90. That's right, incredibly budget-friendly. Now, keep in mind, that does not include the cost of shipping or basic lands, but you might already have those basics, or you can borrow them from a friend, your LGS, or you might just be able to buy them in bulk. Regardless, very, very budget-friendly way to, well, take your opponents out out of nowhere. So, with all that said, let's jump into the tactics. So let's start things off with tactic number one. We're going to talk about the golden pig of this deck, the number one card out of 99, and that is Sarah Avatar. Yeah, this is a really fun thing to hit off the top. A star star avatar for seven mana in total. Power and toughness each equal to your life total. Whenever it's put into a graver from the battlefield, shuffle into its owner's library. So this is one of the very few creatures that all of a sudden can just be, yeah, the biggest threat on the board, uh, of, like, of all time, essentially. Literally, you just, again, you make your little 0-1 egg with the fender, your opponent's like, oh, that's cute, and then it dies. And then all of a sudden, you reveal at the top of your library, and you hit something like this, and then all of a sudden, you've got, like, a 40-40 in play, again, replacing that 0-1. Now, with this deck, well, um, yeah, this is a fling deck. We are going to take our giant creatures and say, hey, in one way or another, I'm going to utilize your power to an absurd amount and take out my opponents with you. I mean, yes, that can be through combat. We've got some ways to maybe trample over. Yes, that can be through, well, taking the power and saying, yes, deal that damage there. Or, yeah, just straight up fling. And we'll talk about all those kinds of effects. But all of a sudden, once you get this in play and you've got mana up for a fling, you can just hold this over your opponents. Your opponents essentially are just all at your Back and call. They're all at your will. Oh, they're all at, oh no, please don't, please don't take me out. Take that player out. And then you can make some deals. You can say, okay, I won't take you out because I'm going to fling this thing. And when I do, that means that you can't attack me for X turns. Whatever, essentially. Just holding it over your opponents, making them do your bidding, and then, yeah, taking out the player that you need to take out. And on top of that, of course, when you fling this, yeah, it gets shuffled back into your library. Which means that cracking another egg can get this again, and again, and again. So yes, this is just a amazing fling target. A great card, and in my opinion, definitely worthy of the title of the Golden Pig of this deck. Next up, though, let's move on to attack number two, Gotta Have Soul, because... Well, there is one other creature in this deck that we can hit off the top of our library with that Laplani's trigger, and that is Soul of Eternity. A star star avatar with power to each equal life total. Um, does that sound familiar? Absolutely it does. That's basically just Sarah Avatar again. But it does not have that shuffling back in the library. And in fact, it kind of is better but worse in a way for this deck. It's better in that it has Encore for 7 white white, which means that, hey, <laughs> you exile from your graveyard, you get a copy for each opponent, and each of those are going to attack those opponents, you lose them at the end step. That's okay, though, 
But the thing is, again, now you have three creatures that maybe you can trample through and take your opponents out, or maybe you can just fling them. Yet yeah, you've got ways to take your opponents out with each of these, essentially. Yeah, it's kind of like another one-off effect, but still, you've got that Seer Avatar that you can keep getting back again and again and again. This is a good, yeah, secondary Seer Avatar that, again, can in some circumstances be even better. So yeah, this is a fantastic card as well. But now let's go into tag number three, Hotline Fling, because, yeah, we're going to be flinging our avatars at our you know, opponent's faces. Fling is a great card for this kind of deck. Sacrifice a creature, deals damage, equal that creature's power to any target. Or target creature or player, I should say. But, yeah, it's going to be an opponent's face, essentially, is what we're going to be doing. Again, when it comes to making a 40-40 just out of nowhere, and then your opponent's like, uh, okay, I thought I was fine. I've got this army in front of me. I've got a full grip, I've got 40 life, and then all of a sudden, then a simple combination of cards just takes them out. Yeah, it's quite fun. Moving on, Thud. An even cheaper fling, essentially, but at sorcery speed, just a single red man do the exact same thing. Next up, Pyrrhic Blast. Yet another fling that we have. Instant for four mana, just cast spell, sacrifice creature, deals damage, equal that creature's power to any target. So basically, again, fling, plus two mana, but we also get to draw a card. Yay! Again, the more of these effects that we have, the more chance that we have to have them when we crack that egg, when we get that avatar into play, and when we have the chance to fling it out of opponent's face, so just take them out out of nowhere. Not so on to tactic number four, Boomerang, because, yeah, some of these flings are kind of repeatable in a way, and they're not necessarily flings, but they still, you know, take our creature's power and say, let's utilize it. So we've got Fiend Lash, a great one, plus two, plus zero, and Reach. Cool, our, our avatar can now reach. Good, block those flyers. Whenever equipped creature is dealt damage, deals that much damage, equal to its power to target player or planeswalker. So basically it says, hey, you know what? I'm going to swing through at you, okay? I'm going to swing at you, and if you block, um, yeah, you're gone. Because I'm just going to send that damage to you. Actually, though, with this, there is kind of a nice little game that you can play with this. Where you're like, okay, hey, play over here, all right? I want to take that player out because I find them to be more intimidating than you. So I'm going to swing at you. You're going to block with that creature. Actually, I don't even care what creature it is. Just block with any creature. And then all of a sudden, I take the damage from my creature and then point it at that other player's face. Or you can keep it back on defense, essentially, and do the exact same thing as well. So, yeah, this is a very, very good card in many circumstances. Moving on, Speed Witch, Ram Through. Target creature control deals damage to its power. Target creature don't control. If the creature control has trample, excess damage is dealt to that creature controller instead. We've got ways to give trample, and all of a sudden now we can say, take out that creature, and also, most likely, your face as well. Again, if you have an opponent that just says a simple, like, 1-1 one, one token in play, you're like, okay, cool. 39 damage to your face. Or even more, we'll talk about ways to gain life as well. Moving on, Electropotence. This one can be quite fun. Whenever a creature is battlefield under control, you may pay two and a red. If you do, that creature deals damage equal to the power to target creature or player. So a great repeatable kind of ETB use and abuse that we can say, you know what? Okay, the egg got cracked. I've got some extra mana lying around. Avatar comes in play. I'm going to pay three mana and all of a sudden just automatically hit someone in the face for that amount. Moving on, Mage Slayer. Whenever crew creature attacks, deals damage equal to its power to the player. Planeswalker's attacking. Yeah, this way, again, you don't even need Trample. You're like, okay, I attack you. You're gone because you can't just stop this. I mean, sure, you maybe have a blocker in play, but that doesn't matter. On the attack trigger, I take you out. Moving on, Soul's Fire. Target creature control deals damage equal to its power to any target. Y yeah, hey, uh, 40 power creature. You can take out whatever you want, essentially. Most likely in opponent's face. Gravitic Punch, basically exact same thing, except it's repeatable. Target creature control deals damage equal to power to target player, and you can also jumpstart it so you can recast from your graveyard by discarding a card and paying its cost. This one is fantastic. It's basically take out two players. And then finally, War Storm Surge. Basically a better uh, Electropotence, essentially. Whenever creature is battlefield under control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Yeah, this is essentially egg crack player gone because essentially you just keep getting Sarah avatar back or the other avatar essentially and they each come into play and they say yeah i'm here boom 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 take players out Moving on, though, again, we've got other avenues to victory, including in combat. So, yeah, let's move on to attack number five, Swing and Smack. 
Footfall Crater is a great card, a very simple aura for a single red mana. Enchant a land, Chain land has tapped, our creature gains trample and haste on turn. Two words that we love to see again, and that our opponents will be very frightened to see, because yes, again, when our avatar hits the field, we're like, yeah, hit the ground running, go swing through and take that player out. Also, if you don't need this, you can cycle away, which is very nice. And keep in mind too, having haste can be fantastic again for Atlapalani, so we can activate Atlapalani right away. Moving on, Messenger Speed, speaking of which, Enchant Creature, Enchant Creature has Trample and Haste, so kind of a one-off aura that we can just put on a creature. Again, could be our commander, could be one of our avatars, whatever you need, make sure you're doing it. Moving on, Become Brutes, one or two tar creatures each gain haste off turn for each of those creatures, create a monster roll token attached to it, and that monster roll token gives them plus one, plus one, lovely, extra power, and also Trample, so that can be absolutely massive. If you crack two eggs, you get both your avatars out. Have fun with that. Moving on, Bitter Reunion. Enters Battlefield, you can discard a card if you do draw two cards. So some nice card selection and card advantage there. Also pay one sacrifice this and creature control gain haste until end of turn. So again, a way to give your commander or give you know, the avatar haste. Moving on, Angel Fire Ignition. Two counters on a creature gains Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink, and Indestructible, and Haste. All the keywords, essentially. All the juicy keywords we love to see. Uh, yeah, gain an absurd amount of life, which is lovely to essentially make your avatar even bigger next time. But yeah, take a player out most likely. And also keep your creature back for you know, blocking too. And you can fly this back to do it again next up chariot of victory very simple equipment essentially first strike trample on haste equip one so yeah just get the creature down get them running right away haunted cloak very similar except it's vigilance trample on haste so again keep them back in combat fires of yabamaya a great one to just keep in play Creatures control of haste, and you can sacrifice and target creatures plus two plus two until end of turn. This can be quite the frustrating play for your opponents if they're like, oh, thank goodness. Oh, man. Oh, well, they've got this creature in play, but they're at 38 life, and I'm at 40 life, so I'm fine. And then you sacrifice this, and your creature gets plus two plus two, and they're gone. More likely, though, you're just going to be, yeah, keeping this in play for the haste. And then we've got Rising of the Day, creature control of haste, and ledger creature control plus one plus zero. Uh, we don't really care about that second part. Give you our creatures haste, though, is huge again, like I mentioned, for many reasons. But now let's move on to tactic number six, Double Trouble, because, um, yeah, there's some spicy things that we can do with this, because, again, there's going to be times where maybe our opponents have more life than us, but that's not going to last for long, because, uh, yeah, Dazzling Reflection, instant for two mana, gain life, yield target creature's power, the next time the creature we deal damage, just turn prevent that damage, so, sure, okay, this might not work in all circumstances, there are certain ones that are like, hey, yeah, let's swing through an opponent... That wouldn't work, but just your standard fling, it is fling dealing the damage, so it doesn't matter that the creature's damage is prevented. So essentially, again, let's just say your opponent has 60 life. Let's say they have a life gain strategy, okay? Good for them. We're at 40 life. We've got our avatar in play, and we're like, okay, cool. Um, Let's gain 40 life for two mana. And then all of a sudden, our avatar is at 80. Then we fling it, and then we take that player out. And also, we just pad our life total by 40. So there you go. Moving on. Soul's Grace. This one is a bit simpler. You gain life field target creature's power. Great. So again, we can still swing through with that creature. It can even be just a weird combat, you know, trick essentially. You swing through at a player, you're trampling through, and they're thinking that they're okay because they're like, okay, I blocked enough to make sure that I'm not gone. And then you play this, you double your life total, which doubles your creature's power, and then they are gone. We also have other ones as well, like Watley, the Sun's Heart. Each creature control assigns its combat infield toughness. That doesn't really matter. What matters is minus three. You gain life field the greatest toughness among creatures you control. So again, the toughness and power are basically interchangeable for our avatars. And yes, we're going to be gaining basically double our life total with that. We also have Predator's Report. Choose target creature control. You gain life field to that creature's power plus its toughness. That is quite strange, and that is quite spicy, and that is basically triple your life total. So again, let's say that we're at 40. All of a sudden, we are at, what, 120? So yeah, you're going to be able to take out any player, essentially. And yes, I'm just saying 40 is a baseline. Sure, if we're lower at 30, again, you've got these ways to gain life. You've got ways to get this power up very quickly. Moving on, Sheltering Word. Dark creature control gains hex per turn, turn, you gain life field that creature's toughness. So again, toughness power does not matter. Protecting one of our creatures is great. And also, yeah, again, double your power, double your life for two mana. We also have Unleashed Fury. This does not double our life total, but still it doubles the power of Tar creature until end of turn. So yeah, again, we are not getting any extra benefits, you know, long term from this, but still just a nice pop of power. Can be absolutely massive. Choose your weapon. Basically, it is the exact same thing. Dower, double power and toughness of a creature, or it deals five damage to our creature with flying. So this one is... Not pretty flexible. Fatal Frenzy, this one's a little more risky, but that's okay. Until I've turned hard creature control, gains trample, gets plus X plus zero, exits power, sacrifice down the turn. Keep in mind with some of these, again, like the flings I've already talked about, and this spell as well, you can actually utilize these to crack eggs if you need to. And we'll talk about some other ways to crack eggs here in a little bit. But yeah, it is a flexible card in that way. And also just, yeah, a way to get one of your avatars through with that trample. And then we've got Rush of Blood. 
plus X plus zero to a creature on turn where X is tower. So again, another way to double up that power. And if we've got, you know, other ways to give trample, great, we can get through. Then there's onward. Tar creature gets plus X plus zero where X is power. So again, the exact same thing. On top of that, Tar creature gains double strike if we cast victory. So yeah, basically, again, if we are swinging with one of our avatars and it's got trample, good luck to an opponent trying to stop this if we have, you know, not enough mana for both. Basically, again, if we're at 40, goes to 80. And then we give double strike and it's basically hitting for 160. So yeah, there are very few decks that can survive that. But now we want to do tactic number seven, make some eggs. Because yeah, when we get our eggs into play, we want to set ourselves up even more sometimes, right? We want to say, okay, I made an egg. Let's make some more so we can be you know, ensured that we can crack them when we need to. And then all of a sudden have the avatars when we need to as well. Wait the reflections, a very simple one. Just populate, basically make a copy of a creature token you control. So cool, get an egg out into play, get another egg out into play. We have got Sundering Growth, basically exact same thing, but also, hey, one more mana and we can destroy target artifact or enchantment, then we populate. So some great removal for us there. Reborn Defense is a great way to protect our team. Populate creature controlling it indestructible until end of turn. So again, a great way to protect, prevent frame board wipe and also make an extra egg. Then finally, growing ranks, begin for upkeep, populate. So again, if we just have one egg in play at the beginning of each upkeep, we can keep making more and more and more eggs. So we are ready to go when we need them. But now let's go to tactic number eight, crack some eggs. And first up, we got Barrage of Expendables, a fantastic one in Shaman that has pay a red mana, sacrifice a creature, one damage to our creature or player. So yeah, you can ping a player in the face. But also, you have to say one mana way to just crack one of your eggs. And also, if you have two eggs in play, you can crack both if you really want to. Just take that damage and you'll know, assign it to the other creature. Then there's Mistress Command, choose two. Choose target player that can discard X cards and draw a card to card to discard this way. So it's some nice card selection for us if we want that. X damage to our creature. So again, this is just basically, hey, you pay one mana into this and it's like, yeah, take out one of your eggs. X damage to a planeswalk if you need to do so. And also, you can give a creature plus X plus zero in haste and alternate. So, another way to essentially say, hey, Avatar, go for it. Moving on, Pyrite Spell Bomb. This one's kind of flexible as well. You can pay a red, sacrifice it to damage any target. So, again, crack an egg, or yeah, just simply sacrifice it to draw a card. Speaking of drawing a card, Ryle, one damage to any of our creatures, gets trample. So, yeah, if you need to give your Avatar trample, but yeah, one damage isn't going to take it out, right? <laughs> and then draw a card as well. Or yeah, just crack an egg more likely. A braid, flexible, three damage to any creature essentially. So yeah, I can take out a small to medium sized creature to opponent controls. Or again, one of your eggs. Or you can destroy an artifact with it. Cathartic Pyre. You can also deal three damage to our creature Planeswalker with this. And then also discard two cards. Draw that many cards if you need to. So depending on what situation you're near in, pick one or the other. Gun Bombardment, an incredible card. Sacrifice a creature, one damage to any target. So again, a great free sacrifice outlet for us which can come in really, really handy. Makeshift munitions, pay one, sacrifice an artifact or creature, one damage to any target. So again, very similar to you know, these Gumball Marmot type cards. Yeah, another great way to essentially crack two eggs at once if you want to. Rip apart, again, pretty flexible as well. Three damage for a creature or player. So again, take out a small to medium sized creature, Planeswalker, or destroy an artifact or enchantment. Street Urchin, commander creatures you own have, pay one, sacrifice a creature or artifact, one damage to any target. So again, that can be very effective and very efficient. Then there's Flick a Coin, one damage to any target, a treasure token draw a card so you get a lot of value out of this one and again just a simple way to say yeah let's crack that egg generous gift this one yeah can take out a lot of things destroy any permanent on the board its controller gets a 3-3 three, three. so sure if you want to make yourself a 3-3 three, three, crack that egg if not yeah destroy one of your opponent's things as well definitely yeah sure you have a 3-3 three, three. I've got a 40-40 what's gonna happen then the, finally there's into the fire Choose one, two damage to each creature planeswalker in battle. So again, take out all the eggs or put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library, then draw that many cards plus one. So again, some nice card selection there as well. Next up, though, let's talk about tactic number nine, prepare the eggs, because yeah, we need to actually ramp to get there to get things set up. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bobble, pay two taps, sacrifice, get a base land, and apply tap. Fauna Fertility, basically enchantment version of Wayfarer's Bobble. Then we've got Rampant Growth, basically a standard ramp spell, two mana, go get any base land, and apply tap. Edge of Om does the exact same thing, except only if we got four or fewer lands, but later in the game, this can be very effective. We can cycle it away by sacrificing a land to replace it. Then there's Fertile Ground, a great enchantment, basically makes one of our lands tap for an extra mana of any color. Cultivate, go get two basics, one goes into play, tapped, one goes into our hand. We also have Kodama's Reach, which does the exact same thing, but it's an arcane spell, which does not matter. Then there's Growth from the Ashes. We can kick it, and then we can get two basics into play untapped, or one if we didn't. Then we've got Harrow, sacrifice one land, get two basics into play untapped. So again, you can utilize those lands right away. Primal Growth can be very effective. Basically, we'll get a basic into play 
untapped, but also if we kick it by sacrificing a creature, we get two. And also, again, sacrificing a creature can be very good, again, when we've got those eggs in play. Search for our, another great turn one play if we've got it then. Suspend two for a single green mana. Go get a basic land in a play untapped. Seize the spoils. This one can help us with some temporary mana. Discard one card, draw two, get a treasure token. Pirates Pilge in a bigger way. Discard a card, draw two cards, make two treasure tokens. So again, some nice temporary mana for us. Then finally, there's Road. Go get a basic land, put on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. And then Ruin is the aftermath side of the card we can cast from our graveyard. Deals damage, target creature, equal to the number of lands you control. So again, hey, scramble an egg, essentially. Or yeah, can be great removal for us. But now let's quickly go through tactic number 10, Great Land, because, yeah, we've talked about all the non-land cards in the stack. Let's talk about the Great Land that I want to highlight, which is Kazul's Fury. Basically, a fling on a land. This is an MDFC, so the backside is a land that enters a battlefield, tap, you can tap for a red. The front side, two and a red. Sacrifice a creature to cast it, and then also deal damage you like creature's power to any target. So again, just another fling for us that really doesn't take up a spot in the deck. So it's a fantastic card to say, oh yeah, I can use this land early, or yeah, I can just utilize it to just demolish your face. But now this episode is coming to a close, it's my turn to hear from you, so in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts are on this deck. Yeah, I really think this is a fun one. This is one where, again, yeah, you can take your opponents out in a very simple way. You say, okay, yeah, I'm going to get some eggs into play, I'm going to crack them, I'm going to get the biggest creatures you've ever seen out of nowhere, and then all of a sudden, either take players out or hold it over their heads and say, you do my bidding now because I can take you out at any point. But yeah, more likely just take all your opponents out. So yeah, it's a very fun deck. If you are interested in it, again, it's a very budget-friendly deck. Just again, Court of Moxfield, $16.92. Make sure you check out that deck list link in the description below. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.